two, Caitlin Miller. Again, the umpires for game number eight. At first base, Tony Greer. At third base, Lance Drugs. And behind the plate, Kim Johnson. Ladies, no match for the anthem here. Four teams to go. So let's play ball. It's a beautiful day for baseball. I haven't seen anybody on the golf course today. It is a little bit windy. What's that? Oh, one, uh, no, two L's. A, L, L, E, G, H E N Y A L L E G H E N Y All right and hello again, everybody, from Trine University in Angola, Indiana. Welcome to the 2013 NCAA Division III Women's Softball Regional Tournament. This game pits the Crusaders of Capital University against the Gators of Allegheny. Winner of this game will advance to, the, to a game tomorrow afternoon against Aurora. And the winner of that game tomorrow at 2 Eastern will move on to the championship finals. Allegheny advancing yesterday with a 4-0 victory over John Carroll. Capital advanced with a 5-1 win over Thomas Moore. Capital comes in, the number two seed in this regional at 35-10. Allegheny the sixth seed, they are 22-18. Capital's the visiting team for this game. Devin Boggs leads it off after hitting two home runs last night. And the first pitch is high. Ball one, Caitlin Neeler pitching for Allegheny. And the next pitch is called a strike by home plate umpire Kim Johnson. Tony Greer the umpire at first. Lance Grubbs is the umpire at third base. Ball two, two balls and one strike. Devin Box, the shortstop, leading things off for the Capital Crusaders. Capital University Crusaders from Columbus, Ohio. And a high fly ball to left center field, and it's caught by the center fielder, Bell Missouri, for out number one. One up and one down in the top of the first inning for Capital. Kelsey Swain bats now, a sophomore from Pickerington, Ohio. She's in center field today for Capital. Swing and a miss, strike one. That's Caitlin Neeler in the circle again today for Allegheny. Gators, the home team for this game. They're in their white uniforms. Capital with their purple tops. They are the visiting team. Capitals in the first base dugout. Allegheny occupies the third base dugout. Clouds have rolled back in. And there looks to be a, maybe a threat of a shower in the vicinity right now. Strike is called. Leanna Cotton waits on deck for Capital. Capital hitting three home runs last night in the victory over in the victory over Thomas Moore. Two of them by Devin Boggs. One out, nobody on base. And there's strike three. That swing got tied up on that swing. Two up and two down in the top of the first inning for the Crusaders. Here's Leanna Cotton. Sophomore. Playing in left field today for the Crusaders. First pitch is called a ball. One ball, no strikes. It's windier today than it was yesterday. 
There's a strike, one ball, one strike. Pretty steady wind throughout the day today, blowing from the right field foul line towards the left field foul line. Anything that gets up in the air towards left field will get a push from that wind. There's a swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. Two outs and nobody on here for a capital in the top of the first inning. Ooh, just missed. Didn't miss by much. Two balls, two strikes. And a foul back to the screen. Cotton stays alive. Caitlin Neeler trying to get a 1-2-3 inning and get her team to the dugout here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top of the first, just underway, no score. There's a foul ball on the third base side. Count stays two and two as Cotton is battling Kneeler right now. We'll give you the starting lineups after this half inning. Fourth and final game of the second day of the tournament. We're down to six teams. We've had two eliminated here in this double elimination tournament. Try and open the day by eliminating Mount Union, six to four. Two two is in the dirt. Ball three three and two the count. Then Thomas Moore eliminated John Carroll four nothing, and the game just concluded. Aurora defeated Anderson six to two. There's a foul out of play, and Cotton is really battling up there. The winner of this game plays Aurora tomorrow at 2 o'clock. That's 2 o'clock Eastern time. Ooh, inside. Missed the corner. Count is full. And Cotton is making Kneeler work here to get this last out. Full count, 3-2. and two. Waiting on deck is Mora Rose. Called strike three. Naylor gets her second strikeout of the inning and nothing across for Capital in the top half of the first inning. We move to the bottom half of the first here in Angola, Indiana. Capital nothing, Allegheny coming to bat. Capital's starting lineup looks like this. Devin Boggs leads off and plays at shortstop. Kelsey Swain, the center fielder, bats second. Leanna Cotton, the left fielder, bats third. Mara Rhodes, the cleanup hitter, is catching. Lexi Majoy bats fifth, and she's at first base. Brooklyn Staten. Staten is the second baseman, batting sixth. Sarah Nist at third base, bats seventh. Katie Neely, the right fielder, bats eighth. And Caitlin Simpson, the designated player, bats ninth. Alyssa Pasnick on the in the circle today for Capital. I have to remember it's sophomore. We can't say it, it's, it's softball. We can't say on the mound. We have to say in the circle. Alyssa Pasnick, a sophomore from Newark, Ohio, the pitcher today for Capital. For Allegheny, their starting lineup looks like this. Leading off and playing at second base is Sadie Stewart. Bell Missouri, the center fielder, bats second. Stephanie Fort, the shortstop, bats third. Haley Hayden, the cleanup hitter, is at first. Katrina George catching, batting fifth. Caitlin Neeler, the pitcher, bats sixth. Nicole Rohde, the third baseman, bats seventh. Maureen Pallone, the left fielder, bats eighth. And Ali Landowski, the DP, bats ninth. Leah Herlocker is the flex today. She's in right field. So here we go to the bottom half of the first inning. Sadie Stewart leads it off for Allegheny. There's no score. Down to six teams now in this tournament. John Carroll and Mount Union have been eliminated. Both losing two games in a row. First pitch outside from Alyssa Patsnick for ball one. Fifteenth trip to the postseason for Allegheny this year. Their first since 2007. There's a foul. One ball, one strike. Sadie Stewart, the batter. Freshman from Jamestown, New York. Went 
to Falconer Central High School. Here's the next pitch. And a strike called by home plate umpire Kim Johnson. One ball and two strikes on Stewart. Missouri waits on deck. The pitch. Missed outside. Two balls and two strikes. No scores. We play the bottom half of the first inning in Angola, Indiana. There's a ball. Stewart trying to get on base, start this first inning off for the Gators of Allegheny College. And a hot shot at the middle, base hit. A leadoff single for Stewart. Well, there goes the no hitter. So Stewart leads off the bottom half of the first inning for Allegheny with a clean single to center field. Bill Missouri now bats. And let's see if she'll be bunny here to try and move Stewart in the scoring position. Allegheny with their leadoff batter on board. Pitch is called a strike, 0-1. You can see the Capitol defense going into motion, expecting Missouri to try and lay one down. One strike on the Allegheny batter. Called strike two. 0-2 the count, and Missouri is in the hole. Stewart, the runner on first with nobody out. No score, bottom half of the first. Outside for a ball, one ball, two strikes. Center fielder Kelsey Swain for Capitol, playing shallow and playing the, to the opposite way on the left-hand batter. The one-two, that's outside for ball two. Two and two the count. Stephanie Fort waits on deck. Mostly cloudy skies here in Angola. We had a lot of sunshine in the last game. But the clouds have rolled back in. On the left side and foul. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Don't forget you can, uh, if you watch the game, you can link into the statistics and all that other information from this tournament. That's on the left side. They'll throw to first. Save! She beat it out. Missouri speeding down the line. Gets an infield hit. And Allegheny with a threat here in the bottom half of the first inning. The Gators are chopping at the bit here. First and second. Nobody out. Stephanie Ford up there. Now let's see if she is going to try and bunt the runners over in the scoring position. Stewart on second. Missouri's on first. Nobody out. An early threat for Allegheny. Strike called. One strike on Fort. Haley Hayden waits on deck. Owen won the count. The pitch. Outside. One ball, one strike. Boy, one thing about watching these games over the last couple of days, the level of play is just outstanding. Ball two. I mean, you, you hardly see any mental mistakes. We've seen some sparkling defensive plays as well. And some outstanding pitching. Ball three. Three and one the count. Stephanie Fort well ahead of the pitcher. Alyssa Patchnik. First two batters have reached for Allegheny. And now Fort is ahead. Three balls and one strike. One more bad one loads the bases. Ooh, she might have helped out the pitcher there. Swung out a pitch that may have been inside. Full count now in Fort. Three balls and two strikes. That pitch was riding in on her hands and she couldn't lay off of it. Payoff pitch upcoming. 
Line! Foul down the third baseline. So we'll do it all over again. Three balls and two strikes. First and second, nobody out for Allegheny. Early trouble for Elisa Pasnick, or Elisa Pasnick. Ground ball to third, out of third, out at second, double play. Capital turns the double play, 5-4. The front two runners are erased. Fort now on first base with two outs. A five to four double play. So that changes things. Haley Hayden bats now with two outs and a runner on first. Hard hit ground ball by Fort, but right to the third baseman, Sarah Nist, who stepped on the bag for the first out and then fired a strike to second. Staten covering for out number two. Runner goals. Late covering a second, and they get the out. Fort cut down as the throw was taken by Devin Box, the shortstop, two to six on the putout. And just like that, the inning is over for Allegheny. They threaten, they get their two, first two runners on base, but after that, the well dried up. No runs, two hits, and nobody left. After one inning of play, Capital Crusaders nothing and the Allegheny Gators nothing. Ro What's that? <laughs> it, well, yeah. <laughs> She's still out. <laughs> It'll be Rose, Majoy, and Staten do up for Capital in the top of the second inning. The four, five, and six hitters. No scores. We enter the second. Capital making its fourth ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. In the NCAA Division III women's softball tournament, they earned an at-large bid. Crusaders right now 35 and 10. They claim the regular season championship in the Ohio Athletic Conference this year. Mara Rolls leads things off for Capital here in the top of the second. No score. Allegheny threatened in the bottom half of the first inning, but a double play ball and runner thrown out at second base trying to steal. End of the threat. Rolls the catcher for Capital leading off the top of the second inning. No scores. We start to the top of the second. That pitch is low. Rolls ahead on the count. Caitlin Neeler set the side down in order in the first inning. There's a strike. Three balls and one strike. Will she take another? Nope, she swings away and fouls it off. And we get ourselves a full count now. Three and two the count. Man Payne. Coaches Capital. And another foul out of play. 15 seasons, record of 275, 229, and 3. Allegheny, coached by Beth Curtis. First season there. And there's the out for out number one. Rose is retired. Here is Lexi Majoy, the capital first baseman. And Mueller has set down the first four in a row. That one's high ball one. Looks like our home plate umpire has taken the windbreaker off. There's a strike. I was talking to the trend in between games. It just seems like today when the sun pops out, it warms up big time. You start sweating, and then the clouds roll back in, and you start to freeze again. Just one of those days. You don't know what to wear. There's a strike. 
One ball and two strikes on Majoy. Brooklyn Staten waits on deck. They set up outside and it stays there and Majoy wasn't going after it. Two balls and two strikes. One out, nobody on top of the second, no score. Foul ball, Majoy stays alive, two and two. Caitlin Neeler, the winning pitcher last night in Allegheny's win. She's back in the circle today. Ground ball to third, right to the third baseman. Throw across in time. As Rohde made the play at third base for Allegheny. Two up and two down in the top of the second for Capital. They have yet to have a base runner. Brooklyn Staten bats now. Their second baseman, number nine, Brooklyn. Now starting to say for Allegheny, their coach is Beth Curtis. 22 and 18 in her first season. Career stretches nine seasons with an overall record of 288 and 157. Gesundheit. They'll sneeze too hard up there, Trent. <laughs> two outs and nobody on. That one is taken high and inside. No score, top of the second. Then picking up again. That's outside for a ball. If Staten gets aboard, Sarah Nist will bat in this inning. Chopped foul on the left side. Now the pitch, another chop foul. That'll be strike two. Two and two the count on Staten. Crusaders looking for their first base runner. Two, two, another chop. Shortstop Fields throw to first and out of first on a close play. Stephanie Fort fires the Hayden at first to retire Staten. Close play at first, but Staten is punched out. Nothing across for Capital in the top of the second. We have played an inning and a half in this NCAA Division III women's softball regional game. Capital nothing, Allegheny nothing. Hayden, George, and Neeler do up for Allegheny in the bottom half of the second inning. They're four, five, and six hitters. The Gators come into the NCAA tournament with a school record and conference lead of 31 homers. Well, they, a team that, that can really hit the ball, they let their conference in a slugging percentage at 434. They had 66 doubles. Haley Hayden, 12 doubles and 28 RBIs entering the tournament. Freshman catcher Katrina George has seven homers. And Stephanie Fort, the reigning NCAC Player of the Year, has homered five times and has scored 39 runs. 21 career homers for Fort. That's third in program history. Gators, a very successful program in the 80s and 90s. They won nine regional championships in a 12-year span between 83 and 95. Haley Hayden. Leads things off for Allegheny in the bottom half of the second. And she takes the first pitch in for a strike, 0-1. No score as we start the bottom half of the second. The, the sun again sneaking through the clouds. The 0-1. And hit her. Hit her on the foot. So Hayden takes one for the team and is on first. Well, here we go again. Allegheny last inning got the first two on base. The front two runners were erased in a double play, and now we're gonna have a conference. Umpires Kim Johnson, Tony Greer, and Lance Grubbs are gonna talk things over here. Stewart singled, Missouri singled, but then Stewart and Missouri were erased in a double play. Stephanie Fort was safe on the fielder's choice, and then she was erased, trying to steal second to end the inning. 
Right now, Hayden is standing down there at first base. The initial ruling was that she was hit by the pitch, and that's how it's going to stand. So Hayden on first, and here's Katrina George. No score, bottom half of the second. George the better. Freshman from New Kensington, Pennsylvania. Looks to bunt, takes it outside, snap throw the first, look out, safe. And a bit of a bump there at first base as Hayden got back into the bag. She and Majoy got together over there. Caitlin Neeler waits on deck. Allegheny, with a great chance to score last inning, could not take advantage of it. The next pitch is a ball. 2-0 the count. George batting 318, 20 homers, 7 RBIs. As a team, Allegheny is hitting 275 for the season. They have cranked out 31 homers. Uh, did he call that a strike? He did. There goes the right hand up. Hayden, the runner on first after being hit by a pitch. Nobody out here in the bottom half of the second. Capital nothing, Allegheny nothing. And it's a attempted a bunt and it's missed. That's gonna even the count at two balls and two strikes. Looks like a little bit of a shower off to the west, but uh, really nothing too threatening. 2-2. Two -two. Missed outside, three and two. Well, Allegheny has seen this movie. <laughs> they got the first two on last inning. Got the leadoff batter on this inning. One more bad pitch. They'll have two on, and there you go. Two on, nobody out. George gets a walk. So a hit batter on a walk, and the Gators have another threat. Let's see if they can cash in this time after being turned away in the first inning. Caitlin Neeler, the pitcher, is up there, and she can help her own cause right now. First and second, nobody out, no score, bottom half of the second. Allegheny with another threat. Neeler bunts it, but it hit her in the batter's box, strike one. Runner on second is Hayden, runner on first is George, nobody out. No score, bottom half of the second here in Angola, Indiana. Trine University once again hosting this NCAA Division Three. Women's Regional Softball Tournament. That's outside, one ball, one strike. Wind again picking up. Here's the next pitch. Attempted a bunt again and it's missed and fouled back. So Neeler Unable to move the runners along so far. Now it's in the hole, one ball, two strikes. I would imagine with two strikes, they'll take the bunt sign off here. One and two the count, runners on first and second, nobody out. It's outside, two and two. So once again, Capital pitcher Alyssa Patsnick has to work out of a jam. She did so in the first inning. Two balls, two strikes, two on, nobody out. And another foul at the plate. We'll do it all over again. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Wind looks like it's shifting a little bit now, looking at Old Glory. It looks like it's blowing out towards center field. It was blowing from the right field foul line towards the left field foul line for most of the day. Now it's blowing out towards right field. Ball three, three and two. Weatherman says it's really going to cool off, especially tomorrow night and into Sunday. So the wind shift may be in anticipation of some cooler weather coming through here for the next few days. Of course, I'm no meteorologist. There's a foul ball. We'll do it all over again. Full count, three balls, two strikes. Tomorrow night, he says, the low here in Angola will be in the mid to upper 30s. 
And then Sunday night's really going to be the cold night. It's supposed to drop down to near freezing, and we could see some frost here in the middle of May. Ground ball to third, out of third, throw across, and a double play! How about that? The Crusaders turn another DP. Hayden is out, five unassisted, and then Neeler is out, five to three, double play, five to three. Hayden the first out, Neeler the second out, George now on second with two outs, and here's Nicole Rohde. Outside, ball one. Well. Pat Snake, not quite out of the woods yet, still with a runner in scoring position, with two outs. Rody, the third baseman, trying to pick up her teammates. Ball two, two and oh the count. Two double plays turned by the Crusader defense with runners on first and second and nobody out. How about that? As Mel Allen used to say. There's a ball. That's Nick struggling with her control somewhat here in this inning. Has hit a better, has walked one. She's been helped out tremendously with the double play ball. Sarah Nist started that double play once again. There's a strike. Three balls and a strike as Rody was taking all the way. Three balls, one strike, two outs, and a runner on second for Allegheny. No score here in the bottom half of the second. Ground ball, shortstop fields, throw in time. Shortstop Devin Boggs making the play there. And the inning is over and Allegheny is turned away again. No runs, no hits, one runner left. Two straight innings, the Crusader defense has turned a double play. And we move to the third inning here in Angola, Indiana. It's still capital nothing, Allegheny nothing. Do up for the Crusaders in the top of the third. It'll be Nist, Neely, and Simpson. Well, some kind of a defensive prowess being shown there by Capital. The last two innings. Capital uh, getting out of uh, a, couple, a couple of tough spots there. Again, uh, Allegheny getting runners on first and second with nobody out in each frame, and they get nothing on the scoreboard. When that happens, that will come back and bite you later on in the game. Devin Box became Capitals first ever Gail Loth OAC Player of the Year. This season, freshman second baseman Brooklyn Staten was selected OAC Rookie of the Year. Box earning first team accolades, Staten, Swain, and sophomore pitcher Brooke Billings tapped second team. And Alyssa Pasnick, today's pitcher, for Capital, picked up all conference honorable mentions. Capital University from Columbus, Ohio, with an enrollment of 3,850 students wearing the purple and gray today. Purple jerseys, the first pitch outside to Sarah Nist, ball one. No scores, we start at the top of the third inning. Another ball, two balls and no strikes. Two and all the count to the leadoff batter here in the top of the third for Capital, Sarah Nist. And it's ball three, three balls, no strikes. Strike caught in the inside corner. Nist was taking all the way. Katie Neely and Caitlin Simpson to follow here in the top of the third for Capital. No score in this game. There's a drive. Well tagged to right field, but there to make the catch is the right fielder, Leah Herlocker, for out number one. So Caitlin Neeler has set down the first seven she has faced. Katie Neely bats now. Neely, a senior from Sugar Grove, Ohio. First 
first pitch is low and inside from Neeler. Ball one. And you can hear that wind. I don't know if you can hear it in the microphone there. But uh, that wind is really picked up and blowing straight out the center field. There's a chopper over the circle. Tough play, and they get the out at first. Charging hard was the shortstop, Stephanie Ford, and she made it look easy. Two up and two down in the top of the third for Capital. Here's Caitlin Simpson, the designated player. Freshman from uh, Loudonville, Ohio. I tell you, that wind change. I think we got some cooler weather coming. They say it's supposed to be only 50 on Sunday for high temperatures. I've told Trent we're the winter cold. After we were sweating here yesterday with temperatures in the uh, low 80s. Big change coming this weekend. Again, frost in the forecast on Sunday night. Usually in this part of, the, of Indiana, we get the last frost about late April. But then again, we've had a pretty weird spring around here. It's been a wet April. May's been pretty nice. We've had some nice days since the first of May. There's a chopper behind the circle in the center field, a base hit. So the number nine batter, Caitlin Simpson, gets aboard with the first hit of the game for Capital. Two outs, top of the order, here's Devin Boggs. And I guarantee you, Neeler did not want to face Box with a runner on base after what she did yesterday with two home runs. Runner on first for Capital, two outs. And Box goes after the first pitch and fouls it back, strike one. Box fly to center her first time up. Before that single, Neeler has set down the first eight batters for Capital. There's a drive in the left center field, a base hit for Boggs. Boy, she's hitting the ball like another Boggs. Fellow by the name of Wade. Simpson checks in at second base, and all of a sudden, Capitals got a two out rally here. First and second for the Crusaders. Two outs. Here's Kelsey Swain. She struck out swinging her first time up. And the first pitch, I guess it's called a ball. Couldn't see the right hand come up. Yep, it is a ball. 1-0 the count. Ball two. So Caitlin Neeler has set down the first eight in a row, but now she has surrendered back-to-back -back singles to Simpson and Boggs. 2-0 the count. There's a... Great play by the third baseman, and they get the out at third. Oh, my. Rhodey with a bit of an ice cream cone there, but she flipped to her teammate, Fort, the shortstop, covering a third to get the force on Simpson to end the inning. So that's all for Capital in the top of the third. No runs, two hits, and two runners left. We move to the bottom half of the third inning here at Trine University, Angola, Indiana. It's still the Capitol Crusaders nothing and the Allegheny Gators nothing. It'll be Pallone, Landowski, and Stewart do up for Allegheny here in the bottom half of the third inning. So a two out threat by Capital. They got runners to first and second, but could not uh, cash it in. Allegheny getting here to the regionals. They were just seven and 11 the first half of the season, but faced six NCAA regional qualifiers during that span, picking up victories over Roland and Christopher Newport. Since opening the Northern part of its schedule, March 30th, the Gators have ridden strong starting pitching and a powerful lineup to a 14 and seven record. And they had won six out of seven before arriving in Angola, make it seven out of eight now following their win yesterday. Maureen Pallone leads it off. And on the first pitch, a ground ball to second, out, one up, one down. Pallone grounds to second for the first out of the inning. 
Chiefs, Dayton to Majoy on the put out. And here's Ali Landowski batting now for Allegheny with one out and nobody aboard here in the last half of the third inning. No score, Allegheny with a couple of chances to take the lead early on. Both in the first and second innings as Landowski takes the ball. They got the first two runners on, first and second in both the first and second innings with nobody out and they could not score. The double play ball bit them. Ball two, two and all the count. Top of the order, Sadie Stewart waits on deck for the Gators. No scores, we play the bottom half of the third. We're down to six teams now in this tournament, double elimination tournament. A little number on the right side, but they'll get the out at first. As the second baseman again, Staten makes the play. Four to three on the put out, two up and two down. Nothing brewing for the Gators here in the bottom half of the third. And we move to the top of the order. Here is Sadie Stewart, second baseman for the Gators. She singled, was later erased in a double play in the first inning. Alfield plays her straight away. First pitch is call the ball. Here's the next pitch to the freshman from Jamestown, New York. And that's a strike, one ball, one strike. We saw the Goodyear blimp earlier today. The blimp, uh, we assumed, was heading south towards Indianapolis for coverage of the Indy 500. The next pitch is ball. It's a ball outside, two balls and one strike. We mentioned uh, during that game we saw the blimp hover above uh, the backstop over there it's not unusual to see the blimp in this part of the country since it's based in Akron and we see it uh, sometimes uh, heading to or from Akron uh, from South Bend after a Notre Dame football game but again uh, we assume it was heading to Indianapolis for the Indy 500 with uh, the uh, poll qualifications next weekend and of course, the race in a few weeks. There's ball four. And a two-out walk for Sadie Stewart. That's the second base on balls allowed by Pasnick. Missouri will bat now with two outs. She singled her first time up. Stewart and Missouri. Got back-to-back -back singles to lead off the bottom half of the first inning, but again, Allegheny was turned away. And it's starting to get a little colder here now. Pitches a ball outside, ball one. Check a temperature here. I know some folks are starting to uh, cover up a little bit more than earlier. Just past six o'clock here in Angola, Indiana. Here's a swing and a miss. Uh, find the temperature here if I can get the, to the right amp here. Here's the next pitch. A shot in the middle, base hit in the center field. So Allegheny now with two on and nobody out. It's 63 degrees according to the Weather Channel here in Angola with cloudy skies. So that's about 20 degrees cooler from yesterday. 63 degrees as we play now on, on an early Friday night. Missouri has her second hit of the game. Stewart on second, Missouri on first, and here's Stephanie Fort. And this will call for a conference in the circle, a very dangerous hitter up there now for Allegheny and Stephanie Fort. A 325 hitter, five homers, 16 RBIs in the season. Ford has started all 41 games this year for Allegheny. Looking to give her team the lead. She hit into a double play her first time up and was later erased trying to steal second base. So 
We're in the bottom half of the third. Capital and Allegheny scoreless, but another threat for the Gators. Runners on first and second with two outs. Capital has been helped by the double play ball in the first two innings. Pasnick deals. Strike one. Fort is looking for a good pitch to hit and drive somewhere. Chance for the Gators to go on top here in the bottom half of the third. And there is ball outside. One ball, one strike. Body skies here. The wind has changed. Going out to right field now, or center field, if you will. Going straight out. The next pitch is outside for ball two. Two and one the count. I don't know if we can get a shot of the flag and maybe out of our camera range, but the uh, Old Glory, after blowing from the right field foul pole towards the left field foul pole earlier, is now shifted around. It's blowing straight out. Strike two, two balls, two strikes. So if these home run hitters can get the ball up in the air to the jet stream, it's going to go. Two and two the count. Patsnick trying to get out of this inning. Check swing on an inside pitch. Did she go? No, she did not. Oh, my. So a full count to Stephanie Fort. Some of the capital players thought that was strike three. They were starting to head in towards the dugout. Payoff pitch coming. Line in the right field, a base hit. Here comes a run in the score. The throw comes back into the middle of the diamond. Stewart scores. Missouri goes to third. Ford an RBI single. And the Gators finally cash in a scoring opportunity. Third time is the charm for Allegheny. And they go on top one to nothing. And they're not done yet. After the first two are retired, the next three reach base. Haley Hayton will be the next batter. And it looks like we're getting a pitching change here. We are. Capital sending in a new pitcher. So we will have a change in the circle for the Crusaders. And uh, we'll let you know about that young lady here in just a second as soon as I get back to the Capital part of the program. It is uh, Brooke Billings, who was the pitcher yesterday, sophomore from Clyde, Ohio. So she has come on in relief here in the bottom half of the third inning for the starter, Alyssa Pasnick. First two are retired here in the bottom half of the third, but then Stewart got a walk. And then a single by Missouri. And Stewart scored on the base hit to right center by Stephanie Ford. Hayden, the next batter, she was hit by a pitcher first time up. One to nothing, Allegheny leads Capital now here in the bottom half of the third. And Hayden steps in for the Gators of Allegheny. They're not done yet, runners on first and third. With uh, two outs, first pitch is low, ball one. So Billings is trying to put out the fire here in the bottom half of the third. There's a strike called, one ball, one strike. One nothing Allegheny here in the last half of the third and they're looking for more. First and third, two outs. There's a ball, two balls and one strike. Why is it the last out of the inning is always, is always the toughest one to get? Isn't it amazing? How many times have we seen you get the first two outs rather easily and then that third out becomes so tough? And there is ball three. Right now, momentum is with the Allegheny Gators. First and third, two outs. Oh, I guess... I was off on my count there. It's ball three. Oh, 
Billings trying to end this third inning. In the dirt, ball four. Now they got the runner hung up between third and home, and she's going to be out. Oh, Allegheny runs themselves out of the inning there as Missouri gets tagged out of the plate. Hayden got a walk. It was going to be bases loaded with two outs, but then Missouri just kind of went too far off the bag at third, and she got tagged out of the plate to end the inning. So kind of a strange way to end it. But uh, Allegheny, they get a run, but uh, that's all. Kind of like George getting turned down for free bread. One run, two hits, and uh, let's see, two runners are left for Allegheny. We have played three innings here at Trine University. It's the Allegheny Gators one and the Capital Crusaders nothing. Cotton, Rose, and Majoy do up in the top of the fourth inning for the Crusaders. I was trying to find uh, the numbers for Billings and I finally found them here. Brooke Billings on in relief now for the Capital Crusaders. A record of 17 and four, ERA 2.32 has pitched 141 innings. She and Pasnick pretty much shared the load of the pitching duties for Capital. Billings, 69 strikeouts and 33 bases on balls this season. All right, here's Leanna Cotton to lead things off. Cotton, a 308 hitter, eight homers and 32 RBIs. Cotton struck out looking her first time up. Will roll her to short. One up and one down in the top of the fourth inning as Fort makes the play at shortstop. Mara Rose bats now. She popped to short her first time up. Rose a 331 hitter. Nine homers, 40 RBIs. Capital with 41 home runs as a team so far this season. This is a team that can knock the ball over the fence. They have a 350 average. They had two girls hit above 400 this year. Ground ball to short. Long throw from the hole in time. Another nice defensive play there by Stephanie Fort. Two up and two down. Very quickly here in the top of the fourth inning for Capital. And Caitlin Neeler working with a one to nothing lead here in the top of the fourth inning. She's allowed just two hits. Strike one. Simpson and Boggs have back-to-back -back singles with two outs last inning, but nothing came of that. One ball, one strike on Lexi Majoy. She's a 324 hitter, six homers and 35 RBIs. There's a smash, and it's a fair ball into the corner. Extra bases. Majoy, a stand-up double. That's her seventh double of the season. It comes with two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. Hit number three for the Crusaders. Here's Brooklyn Staten, 351 hitter, six RBIs on the year, no home runs. And we're going to get a pinch runner, perhaps. Majoy's still out there a second. Well, I thought we were going to get a pinch runner, but apparently not. Well, no, hang on now. Coach is still talk talking with the umpire. Oh, we're going to get a pinch hitter. That's the deal. All right. Lacey Romero will pinch hit here for State. And number two running at second, that's Katie Hurst. Trent helping me out there. Of course, he's got a better view than I have, about 15 feet in the air over there. And you can zoom in, you got that camera. That's right, I forgot about that. And, you're, and you've got younger eyes too. The sky's darkening a little bit off towards the west. Hopefully that rain will hold off. Pitches outside for a ball. By the way, no lights this field in case things get a little lengthy here. 
The pitch is a ball to Romero. 2-0 the count on the pinch hitter. So Capital going to their bench and a foul ball on the third base side. Coach Nam Payne going to her bench here trying to manufacture something and get this game tied here in the top of the fourth inning. Allegheny leading Capital one to nothing. The first two batters were retired, but Majoy doubled down the left field line. Hurst the pitch runner at second. The next pitch is called a ball. Looks like the count is three balls and one strike. On Romero, Sarah Nissen, the next scheduled hitter. There's ball four, and Romero gets the walk. What's with all these two-out rallies in this game? Majoy's on second. I'm sorry, the pinch runner, Hurst, is on second. Romero is on first. And we're going to get a pinch runner now at first base. Staten re-enters. Staten re-enters that first base. So Romero did her job, got a two-out walk. Capital with a threat now with two outs and runners on first and second. They trail 1-0 here in the top of the fourth inning. Sarah Nist, the batter. Fly to right her first time up. Allegheny with a run in the bottom half of the third. They lead 1-0. The first pitch is a ball outside. Caitlin Neeler trying to get that third out, having a few problems here. There's ball two. This is a tough hitting lineup and you have to be careful. And now we'll have a conference on the mound with Katrina George, I'm sorry, in the circle with Katrina George and Caitlin Neeler. Well, when you call baseball for so many years, it's kind of hard to make that transition to women's softball and not say the mound, you gotta say the circle. There's another ball. Plate moving around on Neeler right now. Three balls and no strikes. One more bad one loads the bases. Called strike on the inside corner. Three balls, one strike. Pitch runner, Katie Hurst on second base. Dayton, the runner on first. The 3 1. Line! And a base hit the right. This may tie the game. It's bobbled. It gets by the right fielder. One run is in, another run scoring, and racing for third, and in the third base is Sarah Nist. Two runs score, and Capital has the lead, two to one. As that one ate up the right fielder, her locker, it got away, got all the way to the fence, that allowed both runners, Hurst and Staten to score. All this coming with two outs and nobody on. Nist on third, they're not done yet. There's your tack on run of your capital. Neely bats now. And the pitch is called a strike. Well, we're not anywhere near the official score, so we'll give Nist a single and RBI and she takes the third in the error. There's a pop up and that should end the inning, it does. Squeezed by the second baseman, Stewart for the final out. But the Crusaders do some damage in the top of the fourth inning. They score two runs after there were two outs and nobody on base. Two runs. There were two hits, one error, and one runner left. After three and a half innings of play, it's the Capital Crusaders two and the Allegheny Gators one. So Allegheny ran themselves out of the third inning when they... Had a runner thrown out of the plate after a batter had gotten a walk, which would have loaded the bases. Kind of a strange way for Allegheny to end their third inning. So now they're down two to one. And at times, to be honest, the Gators have been their own worst enemy in this game. They've let scoring opportunities go away. They've had a critical error in the field that cost them a run. They've had runners on first and second in the first and second innings. and. Could not score with nobody out. So the Gators are just going to have to uh, gather themselves here and 
get things going again. Down two to one here in the bottom half of the fourth. It'll be George, Nealer, and Rody do up. Billings now the pitcher of record for Capital. That rally takes uh, Patsnick off the hook. Billings delivers. Hot shot in the left field, a base hit. George swinging at the first pitch, singles in the left field. And the Gators have their leadoff runner or leadoff person on base. Again, women's softball, you really can't say leadoff man. Here's Caitlin Neeler. She hit into a double play her first time up. Capitals defense has turned two DBs. There's a bunt attempt foul. Strike one on Neeler. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Capital two, Allegheny one. Jim Measel, along with our producer director, Trent Lewis, with you. From Trine University in Angola, Indiana. Hope you're enjoying the action in this NCAA Division III Regional Women's Softball Tournament game. There's a bunt. It's a good one this time. They better hurry. Out at first. George takes second. Kneeler just barely out at first base. Almost beat it out. But the sacrifice is successful. One out, George on second, she's the tying run. Nicole Rohde bats. Runner on second and one out. Pitches outside for a ball. Rohde be followed by Maureen Pallone. Here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Capital on top, two to one. There's a fly ball, well tagged, and it's out of here! A blast over the left field fence for Nicole Rohde. And Allegheny goes back into the lead. Rohde hit a mile. Clearing the left field fence with plenty to spare. A two-run homer for Nicole Rohde. And Allegheny goes back on top, three to two. One out, nobody on base. Maureen Pallone bats now. That was a blast. A no-doubter. So here's Pallone with the bases clean now. And the first pitch. High for a ball. Now Allegheny, you would think, has some momentum back on their side as they have struck for two here in the bottom half of the fourth to take the lead back at 3-2 after Capital had taken the lead in the top half of the inning. Ball two. I don't think the, that ball needed any help from the wind. It got out of here in a hurry. There is a dry foul on the third base side. Two balls and one strike. Three to two, Allegheny back on top here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Two balls and one strike. And a high pop-up. Who wants it? It's going to drop! You believe that? Oh, my. Well, the wind took it. Trent uh, points out that wind blowing out towards the outfield fence. May have played tricks with that pop-up, and it dropped in. We're going to have to give Polona a hit there because the fielder didn't touch the ball. So a conference on the mound, Majoy could not make the catch on that pop-up. Second baseman Staten went to cover the back at first, and it looked like uh, Majoy may have stumbled and lost her footing as she was trying to get to that ball. But whatever, Polona's on first now, one out, and a big break there for Allegheny. Can they take advantage of it? Allie Den Landowski, the DP bats. Going inside for a ball. Well, that home run for Rody was her fourth of the season. And RBI's number 15 and 16. 
There's a strike called. One out here in the last half of the fourth inning. Allegheny has gone back into the lead thanks to a two-run homer by Nicole Rohde. That's high. Two balls and one strike. Top of the order, Sadie Stewart waits on deck. Here's the 2-1. Ball three. Three and one the count. The Gators have had base runners in every inning. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. We'll give you a tournament recap after this half inning. Ball four. Landowski gets a walk. Pallone will go to second. Landowski with a walk. So, first and second for the Gators. One out, top of the order. Here's Sadie Stewart. It's been on base twice. Has a single and a walk and a run scored. In the dirt. Good stop by the catcher. Mara Rose. Billing struggling with her control right now. Allegheny has two runs in already here in the bottom half of the fourth. They're looking for more. And a high fly ball out to right center. Right uh, center fielder drifts over and makes the catch. That's uh, Kelsey Swain making the catch for out number two. So Stewart flies to right center. And the batter is Bell Mazurik. Bell is two for two in this game with a couple of singles. Still first and second for Allegheny, now two outs. Blown on second, Landowski is on first. And a high fly ball, short left center, and coming in and making the catch is Kelsey Swain for out number three. So two runs for Allegheny in the bottom half of the fourth inning on the home run by Nicole Rohde. They get three hits, and two runners are left. We move to the top of the fifth inning here at Trine University in this NCAA Division III Women's Softball Regional. It's the Allegheny Gators three, and the Capital Crusaders two. Well, let's recap the action so far today. We had two elimination games to start things off. Trine in the first game sent Mount Union home six to four, trying to open up a six to nothing lead. The Purple Raiders rallied, but their rally fell short. So the Thunder advanced to the next game, which be at noon for them tomorrow against the loser of this game, involving Allegheny and Capital. In the second elimination game, Thomas Moore knocked out John Carroll four nothing. So Thomas Moore will be facing Anderson in the first game tomorrow morning at 10, that too will be an elimination game. Both Thomas Moore and Anderson with one loss in this tournament. Anderson lost to Aurora in the game before this one, six to two. So Aurora is through to the two o'clock game Eastern time tomorrow against the winner of this game. And the winner of that two o'clock game tomorrow will be into the championship round. So this is huge. You want to stay out of that loser's bracket as much as possible. The longer you stay out of that loser's bracket, the better your chances of, of winning a double elimination tournament. Top of the fifth inning, Simpson, Box, and Swain do up for the Capital Crusaders. Neeler surrendered two runs last inning. Allegheny scored a run in the bottom half of the third to go up one to nothing. Capital got two in the fourth. Allegheny got the lead back in the bottom half of the fourth on a two-run homer by Nicole Rohde. 3-2 Allegheny as we play the top of the fifth. And a chopper to the second baseman. One out. Second baseman Stewart playing in shallow, and she was in perfect position for out number one. Top of the order. Here's Devin Boggs. One for two in this game. Singled her last time up. Capital with four hits in this game. Allegheny has seven hits. 3-2 Allegheny, top of the fifth. Box takes the first pitch 
Low and away, ball one. And Neeler had better be careful with this batter. Boggs is swinging a hot bat here in Angola in the first two days of this tournament. Pitch inside, 2-0. Cloudy skies right now here in Angola. It's a bit on the dark side as we're approaching 7 o'clock. Ooh, that missed outside. Scoreboard says two balls and one strike. 6.30 Eastern time right now here in Angola. Ground ball to first, out. Box hit it hard, but right to the first baseman, Hayden, for the out. Two away in the top of the fifth inning for the Crusaders. Kelsey, Kelsey Swain is batting, and we're getting some action in one of the bullpens. Swain, the batter, has struck out and hit into a fielder's choice. Where's that uh, pitcher warming up there, Trent? Okay, we got a capital uh, pitcher warming up. There's a strike. Well, Pasnick is uh, warming up. She may be coming back in. Ground ball, deep in the hole. Fourth throw, not in time, that's a base hit. Swain has a two out single. Fort back out of the ball, deep in the hole, but she had no chance. So Swain is on first with two outs. Leanna Cotton bats. She has struck out looking and grounded the short, 0 for 2. First pitch is called a strike. Here's the 0-1, and that's out of play. 0-2 the count. Caitlin Neeler trying to get out of this inning. Allegheny Gators on top, 3-2, top of the fifth. That's high for a ball. Allegheny College from Meatville, Pennsylvania. Ooh, that didn't miss by much. We have an enrollment of 2,130 students. School was founded in 1815, so they're coming up on their bicentennial celebration here in a couple of years. Fly ball, deep center, well tag, off the fence. Here comes the tying run, and Swain scores standing up. It's a double for Cotton, and we are tied, three to three. The wind carried that ball. And it wasn't, it didn't look like it would be all that well hit when it left Cotton's bat, but it just kept going and going and got over Missouri's head. Hit the fence on the fly. RBI double for Cotton. And we're tied 3-3 again, a two-out rally. Here's Mara Rose, 0 for 2 in this game. Has popped the short, grounded the short. 3-3 tie, top of the fifth, what a game. There's a strike called. One ball, one strike. Cotton now in scoring position with two outs. A single and a double. And Capitals tight this game, there's strike two. One ball and two strikes. There's a foul ball on the third base side. Three, three tie, top of the fifth inning. Back and forth we go. There's a foul ball going out of play. And it is definitely getting cooler as we work our way to the early evening hours. With that wind change, looks like it's uh, blowing more out of the north. Foul behind the plate, no play. Better dig out the winter coats again for the weekend, especially on Sunday with a forecast high only around 50. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. And that ends the inning. But Capital has tied the game. They get one run. Again, a two out rally. One run, two hits, one runner left in scoring position. After four and a half innings, we're all tied up. Capital three, Allegheny three. Well, Billings is back out there for Capital for this fifth inning. Fort, Hayden, and George. We thought Pasnick was warming up in the Capital bullpen, but apparently she was just getting some work in or working on something. So Billings is back out for the bottom half of the fifth inning here. Again, the winner plays Aurora tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. The loser will drop into the loser's bracket and play the host Trying Thunder, the number one seed, tomorrow at noon Eastern. Allegheny, the number six seed in this tournament. They're 22 and 18. Capital, 35 and 10. They're the number two seed. Tell you, trying uh, getting knocked off in the first uh, game of this tournament. The number one seed knocked immediately into the loser's bracket has really opened things up for s some other teams, perhaps. You know, when you lose in the first round, that means you've got to win six straight games to win the regionals. It's not impossible, but it's not easy. Three, four, and five hitters do up for Allegheny here in the bottom half of the fifth. Stephanie Fort has hit into a double play and single. She's hit the ball hard twice. One for two in this game. That single drove in a run in the third inning. And a ball outside, 2-0 oh the count. Game tied, 3-3, bottom half of the fifth inning. It's been a back and forth game. And boy, it's really starting to get dark here now. There's a strike call, two balls, one strike. In case you're wondering, there are no lights in this field. We can probably play to maybe about eight o'clock Eastern. Certainly don't want darkness to descend before we have a decision on this game, but with the clouds, as Harry used to say at Wrigley Field before they put up the lights, hey, we need some lights, Arnie. Here's a foul ball. Two balls and two strikes. Wind blowing out the center field. It's affected a couple of balls already. The double by Cotton basically blew over the center fielder's head. Another foul ball. Fort stays alive. Another 2-2 pitch upcoming. Or a 3-2 pitch, I beg your pardon, and it's ball four. I'm trying to juggle my score sheet and uh, wow, it's the temperature really dropped. 55 degrees now. It is definitely dropping. It went from 63 to 55 in a split. There's a foul ball on the bun attempt. So Ford on first base following the leadoff walk. Hayden the batter, strike one on Haley. She's been hit by the pitch and walked, so she does not have an official time at bat yet. Runner on first is Ford, nobody out. Game tie, 3-3, bottom half of the fifth inning. That's low. One ball, one strike. Allegheny snapped a scoreless tie with one in the bottom half of the third. There's a strike. One ball, two strikes. Capital got two in the top of the fourth. 
Allegheny got the lead back on a two-run homer by Nicole Rohde in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Capital tied it in the fifth. We're in the bottom half of the fifth right now. There's the ball. 3-3 tie in the bottom half of the fifth. Capital in the purple jerseys. Allegheny in the white uniforms. That's ball three. Full count, three balls, two strikes. Hayden, one more bad one and she's on base. Billings struggling with her control right now. Three balls, two strikes, needs to throw a strike. And a drive, deep right, well tied, out of here! Haley Hayden with a two run homer over the right field fence. And Allegheny goes back into the lead at five to three. Mercy. Did she hit that one? That cleared the fence by a good 50 feet. It didn't need any help from the wind. It's about 210 feet around the outfield here at Trine University. And that one, I would say, was hit about 260, maybe 270 feet. She really smoked it. So, Katrina George bats now. She's walked, singled, and scored. Five to three. Allegheny back into the lead. So we could have a lower seed knock off an upper seed here, or a higher seed. That happened twice yesterday. There's a foul back to the backstop. Capital's been fighting from behind all game long. They'll have to do it again. Five to three Allegheny in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Nobody on, nobody out. That wind really picking up and it's getting colder and colder. Ground ball out to short. The throw to first is in time. Boggs makes the play a shortstop for out number one. Caitlin Neeler will bat. She's hit into a double play and sacrificed 0 for 1. So Allegheny playing long ball here in the last couple of innings with a pair of two-run homers. Nicole Rohde last inning and Haley Hayton this inning. First pitch is in for a strike to Neeler. Oh, Hayden worked the count to 3-2, and Billings had to throw a strike, and Hayden jumped all over it. That's low for a ball. One ball, one strike. Really starting to get dark now. I would imagine Trent's got the camera opened up a little bit uh, to compensate for the lack of light. There's a pop fly out the center field. It's caught by the center fielder, Kelsey Swain, for out number two. Rody bats. What you see on your computer at home, it's not that light out right now, folks. It's really getting dark out. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Rody homered her last time up. She's one for two. Two outs and nobody on base. Line foul on the third base side. Five to three, Allegheny leading capital here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Allegheny, the number six seed in this tournament. Capital, the number two seed. There's another drive that's gonna be foul. And that's gonna get hung up on the batting cage over here to our left. That's the game ball, somebody get after it. Somebody climb up that screen. Go on, kid, I'll give you a dollar. Here's the 0-2. Ball one, one ball, two strikes. Again, the temperature has dropped with the wind change here. For most of the afternoon, the wind was blowing from the right field foul pole towards the left field foul pole, practically out of the south. 
Here's a ground ball to third. The throw across, it's in time and the inning is over. Third baseman, Sarah Nist making the play. And so Billings buckles down and sets down the next three hitters following the blast by Haley Hayton. Two more runs for Allegheny in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Two runs on one hit, and it was a big one, the two-run homer by Hayden. Nobody left after five innings of play. Allegheny five, Capital three. A duel for the Crusaders in the top of the sixth inning. It'll be Majoy, Staten, and Nist. The five, six, and seven hitters due up. Again, uh, we had temperatures today in the mid to upper 60s. It was a pleasant afternoon when the sun came out. Very nice conditions uh, during the Anderson game, but boy, here in this game, you could just feel that cold front coming through. I checked uh, my smartphone. The Weather Channel said 63 degrees. Checked it about 20 minutes later, and we're down to 55. Let's uh, check it again here, just for the heck of it. Majoy leads it off here in the top of the six. Strike one. Now we're still at 55. 59 for the high tomorrow, 48 on Sunday. Ground ball, nice scoop by the first baseman. Out at first. Hayden comes up with a nice play in the field after her two run homer. One away for Capital in the top of the six. Brooklyn Staten bats now. She's 0 for 1. There's a play for the third baseman. And out at first. Two up and two down here in the top of the sixth inning. Allegheny in control, leading 5 to 3. Sarah Nist, the next batter. She singled and drove in a run her last time up. The ball was played into an error, and a second run scored in the play. That put Capital ahead 2-1 to one at that point. The Crusaders are trailing now 5-3, to three, and it's starting to get late. Two outs here at the top of the sixth inning. Strike one on Nist. Kneeler pitching with the lead again. Here's a ball. One ball, one strike. Allegheny, the sixth seed, trying to knock off the number two seed, Capital Crusaders. And there's a foul ball going beyond the reach of the right fielder into the tarpit area. Herlocker giving chase, had no chance there. That tarp was needed last night, and it came in handy. Grounds crew did a great job this morning, and we started on time despite the rain last night. She did not swing as they appealed. Two outs, nobody on here in the top of the sixth inning. Kneeler trying to get her team into the dugout. That's a ball, full count, three balls, two strikes. Nist trying to keep the inning going. Payoff pitch, and a high pop-up. Easy play for the third baseman. Squeezed by Rohde for the final out. And nothing doing for Capital in the top of the sixth. They go down one, two, three. We move to the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's the Allegheny Gators five and the Capitol Crusaders three. Pallone, Landowski, and Stewart do up for Allegheny in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Well, yesterday we saw an eight seed knock off a one seed. Also yesterday we had Allegheny, the sixth seed, knock off the three seed, John Carroll. So we had a couple of upsets yesterday as far as you want to follow the seeds are concerned. See, try and beat Mount Union today. That was a one beating a five. Thomas Moore beat John Carroll. That was a seven eliminating a three. And uh, Aurora, a four seed beating an eight seed Anderson. So if this score holds up, this will be the fourth game we would have had four games out of the first eight in which the lower seed knocks off the higher seed. You just never know when it comes to tournament time. You just never know. 
as Mr. Berman likes to say on ESPN, that's why we play the game. So here we go, bottom half of the sixth inning. Pallone, Landowski, and Stewart. It'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters due up for Allegheny. All right, here is Maureen Pallone, ground of the second and single. She's one for two. First pitch is low, ball one. It's five to three Allegheny, and really you look back earlier in the game when they had a couple of other opportunities, that lead could easier, easily be uh, bigger right now. Here's a base hit to left field. Pallone with a leadoff single. As the Gators are looking for insurance here. In the bottom half of the sixth inning, they have had base runners in every inning in this game. Hit number nine for the Gators. And we're going to get a pinch runner here for Allegheny. Let's dig out the roster here. That is uh, Shannon Seagull. Seagull, a sophomore from North Huntington, Pennsylvania. So she's running for Polona first. Landowski, the DP up there now, has walked and grounded out 0 for 1, and she'll probably be bunting. 5 to 3, Allegheny batting here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. They have the lead. And looking ahead to Capitals, seventh inning, their last chance. They'll have the 8, 9, and 1 hitters due up. So it's important for Capital to get into that dugout and not allow any more runs. Keep that deficit at two. Give them a chance that they can get something going with the bottom part of the order. They have some dangerous hitters in the top part and Boggs and Swain and Cotton. So this game is not over yet. First pitch was not offered at ball one. Five to three, Allegheny leading Capital here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's been a back and forth game. The pitch by Billings. Ball two. Boy, with the gathering darkness, I would imagine it's getting kind of hard for the outfielders to pick up the ball off the bat. Two and all the count. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Allegheny looking for some insurance and maybe a chance to put the ball game away as we're approaching 7 o'clock here in Angola. Day number two in this regional tournament winding down. There's the bunt. One play, first base to get the out there. The sacrifice is successful. Pallone moves to second. Or check that, the pitch runner, Siegel, moves to second. Landowski, sacrifice is successful, one out. Top of the order, here's Sadie Stewart. Has single to center, walked and scored, and fly to center. One for two in this game. Billings in the circle with a runner on second and one out. The first pitch is called a strike. Allegheny with one in the third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth. Capital with two in the fourth and one in the fifth inning. The 0-1, ooh, change up. Hangs high, one ball, one strike. Billings, re <laughs> Billings really pulled the string on that pitch. One ball, one strike, one out. In the dirt. Good stop by Rose. Two balls and one strike. Big run out there at second base. Siegel, the pinch runner, with one out. There's a foul. Two balls and two strikes. Looking over the golf course, even though temperatures are in the mid-50s and the wind has kicked up, we got to force them out there. You talk about the diehards. Playing in this weather. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. 
Ball three. Three and two the count. As we mentioned earlier, Trine University hosting a major NCAA Division III sporting event, second straight year. Last year they hosted the National Division III Women's Golf Tournament. Here's a fly ball, deep center. That one's out hit. It's off the fence. And Siegel had to wait for it and checks in at third base. And that's a double for Stewart. And she almost had Allegheny's third homer of the game. Did it hit, hit the mic? Boy, that must have made a nice sound for everybody at home. So Stewart doubles. Second and third now for Allegheny. One out. Zurich the next batter and another conference in the circle. Stewart came within an eyelash of hitting it out of here. Allegheny has two homers in this game. They almost got number three. Nicole Rohde has a two-run homer in the fourth. Haley Hayden has a two-run homer in the fifth. So the conference has been completed. And uh, second and third, a big chance here for Allegheny to really bust this game open. One out. Missouri, the batter, has singled twice in this game. And it's a fly to center. She's two for three. Allegheny's offense erupting here tonight. That was their 10th hit. So here's Missouri with runners on second and third and one out. Billings throws. And it's a strike called, 0-1. Capital trying to keep it at a two-run deficit here, but Allegheny is threatening in the last half of the sixth inning. That's up high, one ball, one strike. One ball, one strike, one out. And it swung on and popped up. Playable? No, out of play. One ball and two strikes. Stephanie Fort waits on deck for Allegheny. Five to three. Gators leading the Crusaders here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The pitch. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Allegheny has kept the pressure on the Capitol defense throughout the entire game. 2-2. Two, two. Ball three. First base is open. Three balls and two strikes. And there'll be a payoff pitch upcoming right now. Three and two with one out. High pop up on the infield, caught by Box for out number two. So Billings gets Musiric to pop out for the second out. Big out there. And here's Stephanie Fort. She's hit into a double play, singled in a run. Walked and scored a run, so she's one for two in this game. Second and third with two outs. Can Fort pick up her teammate here? First pitch is a ball outside. Again, it'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters due up for Capital in the top of the seventh. And the Crusaders are hoping to be down only two when they come to the plate. Fort with a 1-0 count. That's in for a strike. One ball, one strike. Runner on third. Is a Siegel, the pinch runner. Stewart on second. 1-1. One, one. Ball two. Two balls and one strike. Two-one pitch is coming. 
And a called strike on the inside corner. Count is even. Two balls and two strikes to Fort. Billings trying to get this last out. Get her team into the dugout. 2-2 pitch upcoming. Ball three. Full count, three balls and two strikes. We're approaching 7 o'clock in Angola. Maybe another hour of daylight left. 55 degrees right now. Temperatures dropped in this ball game. There's ball four. So Fort gets her second walk of the game. The bases are loaded with Gators and two outs. And here's Haley Hayden, who hit a two-run homer in the fifth inning. The snap, a 3-3 tie. And we're going to have a new pitcher. Billings leaves the circle. And it's uh, Pavsnik back into the game as the pitcher. So Pavsnik returns to the circle for Capital. It's 5-3 Allegheny here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. When play resumes, there'll be two outs, and the bases will be loaded. Boy, it's starting to get uh, cold on my hands right now. <laughs> we didn't have that problem yesterday. We are wondering why didn't we wear shorts when it was like 82 degrees. But it's almost a 25-degree difference now from uh, yesterday afternoon. 5-3, Allegheny leading Capital here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. So Alyssa Pasnick back in the circle. She's a sophomore from Newark, Ohio. And this season she had a record of 18-6 with an ERA of 3.07. 118 strikeouts and 150 innings of work. Walked 90 batters. Has a shutout and a save to her credit. And the first pitch is a ball to Haley Hayton. Ball one, no place to put her. Bases loaded with Gators and two outs. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. One and one the count with two outs. That's ball two, two balls and one strike. Siegel, the runner on third. Stewart's on second. Fort's on first. Ball three. Another bad one and a run is in. Three balls, one strike. With two outs and the base is loaded. She's got to throw a strike now. And does. Full count, three balls, two strikes. So the string is out. Base is loaded, three balls, two strikes, two outs. Big pitch here. And it's ball four. A run is home. Siegel, the pinch runner, is forced home on the bases loaded walk. Another RBI for Hayden. That gives her three for this game. Six to three now. Allegheny with a three run lead. Katrina George bats for the bases loaded. And the first pitch to George is high, ball one. So Capital will be facing at least a three-run deficit when they bat in the top of the seventh. A run is in for Allegheny here in the last of the sixth. Could be more. Ground ball to short. Boxes throw. It's in time. And the inning is over. But Allegheny picks up an insurance run. One run in the inning. And they had two hits. Three runners left. So we move to the top of the seventh inning. Your score now, the Allegheny Gators six and the Capital Crusaders one. Well, so far in this game, Allegheny 
has, um, let's see, they have stranded, I'm trying to check here, five runners, eight runners. They have left eight. Allegheny has ten hits in this game. They've out hit Capital ten to six. For the Crusaders in the top of the seventh, Neely, Simpson, and Boggs are the scheduled hitters, the eight, nine, and one hitters for the Crusaders. And they need three to tie, four to go ahead. The number six seed, Allegheny Gators, three outs away from playing in the two o'clock game tomorrow. And the winner of that game will be playing in the championship round. And it'll be the fourth time in this tournament in the first eight games, a lower seed would have beaten a higher seed. So here's Katie Neely. Lead things off for Capital. She's grounded the short and popped the second. Caitlin Neeler back into the circle for Allegheny. Trying to get these final three outs. Six to three, Gators over the Crusaders as we play the top of the seventh. First pitch, first ball swinging, foul ball into the Crusader dugout, strike one. Capital looking for a rally here in the seventh. They need at least three, there's a ball. They have the offense to do it. They're very capable of coming back. We'll see what happens. Strike two. And Neeler gets ahead. One ball, two strikes. That just missed outside. Two balls, two strikes. Six to three. Allegheny with the lead here in the top of the seventh. Ground ball to short. It eats up the shortstop. And Capital with their leadoff batter on board. As Fort let that ball play here, that's going to be an error. We're going to have to give Stephanie Fort an error there. So Neely is aboard. That brings a tying run into the on-deck circle now for Capital. Boy, that run Allegheny got last inning looks awfully big now, doesn't it? Here's Caitlin Simpson. She has a single to center and a ground out to second. She's hit the ball to the middle twice. She's one for two in this game. Almost hit her. One and all the count. Neely, the runner on first with nobody out. If Simpson gets aboard, the tying run will be at the plate. Oh, she got jammed and fouled it off. One ball, one strike. Top of the order, Devin Boggs waits on deck. And you, if you're Allegheny, you don't want to have Boggs represent the tying run the way she's been hitting the ball. And with the wind blowing out. There's a ball, gets away, wild pitch. And Neely will move the second. She is there with nobody out. And a 2-1 count on Simpson. Well, the Gators have to realize that that run at second base, that run at second base doesn't mean anything. They have to concentrate on the hitter. They do not want to get that tying run out to the plate. If Capital can get the tying run to the plate, they'll have a chance. And another ball gets away, and safe at third is Neely. So back-to-back -back wild pitches. And Neeler is struggling here a little bit in this seventh inning. Maybe the nerve's starting to take over a little bit. Board shows 2-1, but I believe it's 3-1, and we're going to get a conference in the circle. Jim Misa with you in Angola, Indiana at Trine University. Along with Trent Lewis, our producer-director, hope you're enjoying the action wherever you're logged on to on this early Friday night. Temperature has dropped since game time. Last we checked, it was 55. Well, we just lost another degree. We're down to 54 degrees now. 
under cloudy skies. So it's almost 30 degrees cooler than what it was yesterday afternoon when we had temperatures in the in the uh, low 80s. Three balls, one strike, one more bad pitch to Simpson. The tying run is at the plate. She hits it to the third baseman. Throw to first, and the outs recorded there. And the runner on third started the break for the plate, but the, decided to go back. Neely dives back into the bag. So Simpson is out 5-3 to three for the first out. The tying run does not come to the plate in the person of Devin Boggs. She's fly to center, single to left center, hit the ball hard to the first baseman, but was out last time up. She's one for three. Neely on third, one out. Ball one to Boggs. She's trying to get on base to get the tying run to the plate. Kelsey Swain right now represents the tying run, but she's in the on-deck circle. Right back to Neeler. Two outs. Runner stays at third. Oh, that's a big out there for Neeler. Got a tough hitter. Two away. Allegheny's one out away from a victory. Their second straight here in this regional tournament. And Kelsey Swain is Capitals' last chance. She has struck out, hit into a fielder's choice, single and scored. One for three. Neely, the runner on third with two outs. Her run is inconsequential. It's 6-3 to three Allegheny with two outs in the top of the seventh. Swing and a miss, strike one. Caitlin Neeler trying to close the show now. Bring the curtain down. Allegheny is one out away from their second straight victory in this tournament. Outside for a ball, one ball, one strike. They're looking for a date with Aurora tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock Eastern if they can get this last out. Swing and a miss. Ball game. Swain strikes out to end the game. So for the Capital Crusaders in the top of the seventh, no runs, no hits, one runner left. And your final score, the Allegheny Gators 6, the Capital Crusaders 3. And so, Allegheny, the number 6 seed, wins their second straight game. And they will be facing Aurora tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern. Capital, the number 2 seed, their record now 35-11. and 11, And they'll be facing Trine tomorrow at noon. So the top two seeds will do battle in an elimination game tomorrow at noon here in Angola. Capital drops to 35 and 11. Allegheny with the victory improves to 23 and 18. So the schedule for tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Thomas Moore against Anderson, followed by Trine against Capital at noon. Then it's Aurora against Allegheny at 2 o'clock. And then we'll have an elimination game at 4 Pitting the winners from the games at 10 at noon. So that's the story tonight here in Angola, Indiana. We thank you all for logging on and watching. Again, the final score here in this NCAA Division III Regional Softball Tournament game hosted by Trine University in Angola, Indiana. The Allegheny Gators 6, the Capital Crusaders 3. Now speaking on behalf of our producer, director Trent Lewis, I'm Jim Measel. Have a good night, everybody.